What do these forests bear? Chipko. Nestled between the paramount Himalayan mountain range lies the state of Uttarakhand in India. It is known worldwide as the Dev Pumi, or Land of the Gods, for its ethereal beauty. The women and mountain communities gather food, grass, and fodder to sustain their village. As Rabindranath Tagore, a revered Indian author, has written, The culture of the forest has fueled the culture of Indian society. Before the British annexed India, local governments had established that at least 60% forest cover was required in the Indian Himalayas. Yet, when the British Empire took over India in 1858, the fruitful forests of Uttarakhand were exploited to produce railways and privatized to be auctioned off to the highest bidders. Villagers were not allowed to use the forests in any way. After gaining independence from the British in 1947, the Indian Forestry Service continued the unjust practices of the Imperial Forestry Service. Tensions were brewing between the peasants and the government, as the forests were essential to the peasants' livelihood. They depended on the trees and worshipped them. Meanwhile, the percentage of forest cover in the region was only 14%. During these times of tension, Jandi Prasad Bhatt was a young man with a revolutionary spirit, always seeking ways in which to better the lives of the indigenous hillfolk of Uttarakhand. Before Chipko, we were Sarvode workers in Gandhiji's movement. Because of Sarvode work, we used to travel all over Uttarakhand. Through his travels, Putt became aware of widespread economic depression in the villages of Uttarakhand, caused largely by the government's inability to support the villagers. To take a stand against this, Putt established the Sholi Graham Swarajya Mandal, DGSM, or Self-Governing Village Rule, in 1964. Over the next few years, the DGSM established itself as an important contributor to the villagers' welfare by judiciously using timber to run the small businesses they had built to employ local villagers and by educating villagers about the importance of preserving the environment. In the July of 1970, the local Aleknanda River flooded, demolishing 13 bridges, two whole villages, and costing 200 lives. This flood was the catalyst of the Chipko movement, as fierce stands against the deforestation became more and more popular. Recognizing the urgency to defend the forests, Jandi Prasad Bhatt declared, Let us launch into a movement in which we will stick to the trees, and we'll tell the people who cut the trees with their axes, You bury your axe in my back. If your axe is strong, then cut my back. Thus, the Chipko movement began. Chipko means to embrace. In the Chipko movement of 1974, villagers took a stand against unjust forestry practices that were threatening their livelihood by protecting their environment with their own bodies, leading to a 15-year ban on cutting trees in the Himalayan region and thrusting environmental conservatism into the spotlights of Indian and global government and society. In January 1974, an auction to sell off parts of the forest near the village of Reni had been scheduled. Immediately, the locals began working on plans to save their trees. However, the government was purposefully subtle in planning this operation, to avoid resistance from the locals. On the 26th of March, the people of Reni village were called to the faraway village of Chamoli to receive their land acquisition dues from the 1962 Indochina War. That same day, forest officials called me to the town to discuss the movement, asked to sneakily send their lumbermen to Reni. Now, at the village, there were no men. All of them went to collect their dues. There were only women. The contractor's men drove from the town toward Rainy Forest. The lumbermen took a roundabout path to avoid the village. However, a little girl caught the lumbermen marching towards the forest and ran to tell Gora Devi, an elderly leader of the village women. Actually, I had gone to fill water. I was near the tap when I saw those men all going across from there. Within minutes, about 30 women and children were hurrying towards the forest. When confronted by the women, the lumbermen became abusive, teasing them and threatening to kill them. Yet, the villagers stood their ground, and Gora Devi spoke the words of a true Chipko activist. 
This forest is like our mother. You will have to shoot me before you cut it down. Slowly, the men realized they could not cut the trees. The Satyagraha are non-violent principles of the Chipko stand, as were seen in Mahatma Gandhi's movement, could not be ignored. The protesters had never violated any laws. Utterly defeated, the men retreated from the forest, and the women stood guard of their trees all through the night. News of the successful rainy stand propagated fiercer anti-government sentiments amongst the villagers. Pressured into action, the local government appointed a scientific committee to inquire into the validity of the Chipko movement. However, the committee did not publish their results on time, and the government took this to be a clear sign that the villagers were protesting for no reason, as no scientific evidence supporting local ecological degradation had been found. The Union Minister of Communications attached the protests to the villagers' backwardness and removal from society, writing off Chipko as peasants overreacting, being greedy, and not seeing the Himalayan forests as assets to Uttarakhand's economy. However, the villagers' spirit did not waver, and they continued to stand strong against the policies of the government they knew were harmful to them. In the end, the committee publishing its conclusions took two years and vindicated the Chipko stand. On October 15, 1977, the chief minister of Uttar Pradesh, a neighboring state of Uttarakhand, accepted the committee's report and declared a ban on cutting trees in the most ecologically sensitive areas. As the awareness of ecological conservation in legislative bodies grew, the first ever article enacting environmental protection laws was added to the Indian Constitution in 1977. After the rainy victory, the DGSM, headed by Chandi Prasad Bhatt, started a local environmental camp to educate villagers about the reforestation efforts. They planted approximately 10,000 trees, significantly reducing the chances of destructive erosion and landslides. The government was so impressed with the results of the camp, they agreed to pay the expenses of DGSM. Subsequently, these environmental camps spread all over the region, and more than 20,000 trees were planted in this reforestation effort. With the environmental camps and continued protesting, the message of the Chipko movement reached the Prime Minister of India at the time, Indira Gandhi. Gandhi was deeply moved by the Chipko movement and stated that she would ensure that the forest area in the Himalayas increase. True to her word, Gandhi passed a 15-year ban on all lumber activity in the Indian Himalayan region in 1981. After this landmark success, Chipko began to receive international attention. In 1987, it was mentioned alongside other successful environmental stands in a speech by the World Bank in Pennsylvania. Those courageous enough to interpose their bodies between trees and the chainsaws or bulldozers join Greenpeace, Chipko, or Earth First. In India itself, Chipko inspired many sibling movements, such as the Upiko movement in South India, in which villagers were also denied access to their forests and took a stand like that of the Chipko activists. The stand in Rainy was particularly significant in the great anthology that was and is Chipko, as it was not just a stand against harmful felling practices, but a stand for the equal acknowledgement of women and the rightful integration of indigenous peoples as capable and valued global citizens. Since the Chipko movement, the balance of ecology and economy is a battle that has not been resolved, Yet, the message of the Chipko movement has stood the test of time and resonates with thousands of people across the globe today who understand that if these villagers, led by revolutionaries like Chandi Prasad Bhatt and Gora Devi, had not taken their stand to protect their legacy, the villages of the Indian Himalayas could very well be buried underneath landslides and swept away by floods. The Chipko movement was significant in history, as it will stand as an important reminder to humanity that hopefully we are able to see past the government officials who said, You foolish village women, do you know what these forests bear? Resin, timber, and foreign exchange. But rather, see as the women of Rini village did, responding to the officials, What do forests bear? Soil, water, and pure air.